Welcome into the official. We got a great show for you this week, as always. You know what? Before we start, if you're watching this, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, we're trying to get up to 3K subscribers. We're so close. Really like you to do that. But, you know, ultimately, we are here to talk to you about recruiting. So we're going to get into that right after the break here and go over the All-Star Games that just took place this past week. And some guys kind of shined. Some guys left more questions than answers. And then a huge coaching change that could affect recruiting. Breaking news today. Um, so with that, this is the official. <laughs> All right, all right, David. Welcome in. It's just us tonight. Uh, thoughts and prayers out to Matt, who apparently is undergoing a winter siege. Um, now that I'm in Chicago, you know that could happen to me at some point. So, you know, we're we're just going to support Matt by show must go on. But we're hoping that he's good. He seems good. Just might not have any uh, any weather. So, right off the bat, we got to start with Nick Saban is out retiring. There were some rumors that might happen, David, but you know we're not going to get too far into it. But what do you think this means for their recruiting class? I know one guy that we're going to talk about today is already decommitted. Tell us your you know rapid fire thoughts on the recruiting impact here. Yeah, that's the hot news right now. Um, I think within like an hour ago, Ryan Williams decommitted. Walker White, he tried to tell us he was he was telling us there's some there's some buzz going around that Ryan Williams not 100% sold. I mean, obviously this is a huge chip to fall and and that's definitely motivating him to to possibly flip, but if he does go to Auburn and they they get Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, him and then Bryce Kane and Malcolm Simmons, that's just that's a lot of wide receivers, a lot of talented wide receivers. Uh kind of a log jam there. We'll we'll see how that shakes out, but yeah, I don't know. It's it. It seems like the it kind of depends on who they end up hiring, I suppose. Um, but there's some decent pieces they have in their class that could end up flipping. the The guys that come to my mind are uh, obviously Julian Stein, who's a top five QB for pretty much everyone in this class, it seems. And then um, the big running back Daniel Hill, who did pretty well during this All Star Week, and. Kevin Kevin Riley, I believe he flipped from Miami to Alabama, mm -hmm. Alabama recently. So I don't know. Maybe he comes back on the market, but I'm sure there's going to be some interesting movement. Yeah, and then you know, as far as some other receivers, obviously the guys you described, like Al or Auburn, pretty much took most of the best receivers in Alabama. They got Jameer Grimsley out of uh, Tampa Catholic, so that's down in Florida. He's committed. Uh, Bubba Hampton. <clears throat> um, out of Texas, still committed, maybe a wide receiver, maybe a defensive back. I think the jury's still a little bit out on that. Kevin Riley's already signed a letter of intent. Amari Jefferson has already signed a letter of intent and Rico Scott. So those guys signed letters. Uh, and you know what? I don't know exactly what happens. I mean, obviously you get one free train. I mean, I guess you get any transfers of any kind at, at any time now so they could all just transfer i suppose if they really wanted to so despite signing a letter of intent we could see some fallout i don't think it's gonna be a huge deal i think they're probably gonna get like dan lanning who's one of the biggest studs in the entire coaching world he would be my number one there's been some rumors that he's already in tuscaloosa you know obviously just rumors but that to me would be the slam dunk and honestly if they had reached out to lanning and said hey would you come now if Saban retires? And he said, yeah, that they just said, all right, green light the whole thing. Because to me, he's like the most slam dunk coach. He's shown it all. He's shown on the field. He's shown recruiting, done at a big power five school. Um, he's just an absolute stud coach. So uh, if that happens, I doubt they lose many people. But we'll, we'll see. Ryan Williams already decommitted. And like you said, you know, Walker White was telling us and I was skeptical to be honest, but that freeze five might be a real thing. And, you know, they all can't, they all can't be great. So that will be interesting who 
turns into a year one zero. I think Ryan Williams would be by far the best guy in that in that uh, in that room, in the whole room, not even not just the class. Okay, well, had to touch on that. Biggest news in the entire everything college football, and we love college football, but the main the main you know meat of this is going to be the All Star games. They just happened last week. We had the Under Armour. We had the I guess it's just called the um, All American Bowl now. It's not the Ar- is it the Army? I don't know what it is called, but there's two All Star games. And so, you know, I think we're just going to have this be a free flowing conversation, David. Um, what did you see? Give me some highlights. What are the big take homes, good or bad, uh, from this week? I guess the main headliner would probably be TJ Moore. Um, Sounds like he was the MVP for a lot of people. I know, I think some of the superlatives they were giving out is that he was the best route runner, most consistent route runner, separator in general. Uh, We've already talked about, we already already kind of mentioned, like, don't pay attention to his track times. Like, he's fast. Like, we got him at 21.9 miles per hour. He, he, he He can separate vertically, all that stuff. Um, but he was consistent all week during the practice. And then he just kind of dominated the game. Um, he had had a stat line that you do not see in these contests. Yeah. You don't see this. He had 10 catches, 166 yards and two TDs. I mean, normally Um, you see like two for 27, you know, that's the kind of stat line you see for most of these, these all-star games. Yeah, pretty much. So he had like the majority of the receiving yards. Um, this was just one of the highlights I threw in there. There was ton. You can go on YouTube and find a lot of these one on ones and stuff. But he really stro- he showed off his ball skills right here. You can see a little slow mo here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's got he's a pretty well rounded receiver. Honestly, I think he'll be able to you know separate on all three levels. And I think uh, Dabo shows that he's willing to play freshman quite a bit and they just hate the transfer portal. So we don't have to worry about mm-hmm. other guys, other, you know, 25 year olds cutting in line and, and taking a snap. <laughs> so, so that's uh, an appealing thing, appealing thing with him. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, TJ Moore has been a guy for me who's ru- been a riser, you know, kind of throughout the entire process. And I have to give you credit for beating the drum kind of early that, Hey, you know, this guy's more than just a deep threat. Uh, which is kind of what I think was my original thought was like, Oh, he's just, you know, he's a fast, deep threat. He looks like a very complete receiver. One thing that I saw on a couple of the one-on-one clips was just a a second gear of acceleration during routes. You know, when he kind of can make a, a break, but then cuts up after the break. I mean, he, he would pull away within a few steps in a short area and that was just very impressive to me, kind of what I saw from Isaiah Bond a few years ago during his, un, uh, un, whatever the All-Star game was, his practices. I mean, just a guy that, you know, you're running with a guy and all of a sudden there's there's a there's a leap of acceleration and you, and you just pull away. And I saw that with TJ Moore, in addition to route running, ball skills, he really is coming together as a super complete receiver. I think he's going to wind up top five for me. In yeah, this I think he'll be top five. Yeah, I, I think the other thing is he actually very. That's like one thing I've noticed. A lot of these guys are very deliberate in their route running, and he actually like varies his pacing and stuff, mm. which kind of throws DBs off kilter a little bit. A lot of guys just, I don't know why they don't do like little hezzy moves and stuff like that, but he he does those little those little things that keep, that get separation. Yeah, he looks really good. I mean, they have uh, Tyler Brown who was good this year um, as a freshman, but. They've struggled. I mean, I guess Antonio Williams looked good as a freshman, but then he kind of fell back. I think he was injured on and off this year. But, you know, that room is – there's room for another guy. Now, I don't know if Clay Klubnik can really support multiple receivers, but, you know, I would bet on the talent at this point more than anything else. And TJ Moore comes away this week. I agree. Uh, Really just solidifying a guy that I will be excited to draft in freshman drafts for sure. Um, uh, okay. Anybody else that you want to highlight, um, on your end? Yeah, I'll just throw out 
curious to talk about, but I'll let you go. I'll let you, yeah, I'll let you throw that name out. I'll throw out Mario Craver, which was a surprising one to me because I just hadn't spent a whole lot of time on him. And uh, he he's actually from Clay Chalkville out in Alabama. He went to the same school as Squirrel White. But, like, their games are, like, very – they're obviously – he's small. He's, like, 5'9", 165. I know Mississippi State already has his listing on the on their school website. They have him at 179. I just – I don't know. Sometimes you just have to, like, call BS on some of that stuff. He looks pretty small to me. So, regardless, he's crazy quick. He actually had better ball skills than I – I didn't think he had those ball skills. That was a good catch, too. I saw that one. Um. Yeah, he wins the he wins one against uh, Jalen and Beckway too, who is like an absolute. He's a five star player. I think it was earlier. I, I I missed it as I was getting my train of thought, but um, who runs like a ten to one hundred meter, crazy fast guy going to Alabama, five star guy. So he won a rev vertically against that guy. So I mean, it just shows out he's got crazy wheels too. Um, am I gonna like? hype him up for Debbie purposes. I don't really know. Uh, the one annoying thing is that Kevin Coleman, I don't know if you remember him from a couple classes ago. He just, he just transferred to Mississippi state. And I think him and, um, what's his name? Whitmer. I think it is. They might, they already had kind of have two slot guys. So I don't know if he'll be a suit. I don't think he'll be like a year one zero, but I don't think he's going to be heavily involved at least right away. Yeah. I still, you know, for, for years, we, we liked a lot of the passing volume in Mississippi state. I don't know what their identity is. I, I'll have to totally be honest. I did not follow them too much this year. So I, I'm not sure what kind of a landing spot it is, although it is sec and, you know, we might as well just tie it in here. I, this is not the guy I was, I was wanting to throw out there, but it just works with uh, our conversation. Michael Van Buren, I thought had a decent week and looked pretty good. He's a guy that, at least from the highlights and the film that I've been able to watch, I thought was an interesting QB prospect. And, uh, you know, Matt isn't here to throw cold water on it. I know he's not a fan, but, um, you know, Van Buren looks like he showed off his athleticism. He showed off his ability to kind of escape, make plays all over the field and create with his legs. Uh, And so that could be an interesting offense that starts coming together at Mississippi State if some of these guys hit. I agree. Watching some of the one-on-ones, Craver is a guy that is a name that I went and kind of like went back and looked at my grade on him, went back and was like, who is this guy? Because, you know, he wasn't the guy that necessarily stood out to me during the process. But when I was watching those one-on-ones, he definitely looked like he had an extra gear. So... um, He's small, but I mean, honestly, a lot of these guys are small. Like it's just the way it is. Uh, and the bigger guys usually don't impress me too much anyway, because they're, they got major holes in their game, even though they're tall. <clears throat> um, I'll throw it over to you. We have some clips of him. Nate Frazier. What did you see with Nate Frazier? I actually didn't read a ton on him when I was kind of looking at stuff. But uh, did he have a nice week? And uh, how? What's the what's the pulse there uh, on his way to Georgia? Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to stand out in these in these environments when you're a running back. But this was the huge. This was the big highlight. This big 50 yard wheel route that he hit. I just wanted to throw this in here. Uh, yeah. Kind of missed one. Kind of missed one. That was the only rep I found one one v one from the week. Okay. Uh, for, for their actual practice, so that's kind of how I'm thinking about Frazier in a nutshell right now. Like, I, I don't know if it's just like an inconsistency thing, but like I kind of posted on Twitter about how for whatever reason, matter day just didn't, they get, they gave Davis in the between the tackle stuff. Uh, Frazier for the most part was like an outside runner, uh, crazy juice. Like that's kind of what all the reports were. Like his acceleration is definitely noticeably was noticeably different than all the other running backs involved. Um, so that's something to look at. I think he is a pretty good pass catcher in general, but like I said, they, they preferred this like 160, 170 pound Asian Bryant who had like, you know, triple the amount of catches or something like that. So I think maybe it's just like a consistency thing with him. Um, you just need a coaching staff to trust him, but like the talent is there. Will he put it all together? I, 
who's to say, but I, I'm, I'm pulling for him. And I think he, he's got a lot of upside if he can. Yeah. <clears throat> the issue is in most of our freshman drafts, we're going to have to decide if we want to, you know, pick him up before we know if he kind of gets on track with a new coaching staff and a, and a college level room. You know, I, I probably will be tentative to pull the trigger. I, I don't think I'm going to be super excited to get him on my team. But, uh, you know, if he falls, I think you just bet on some of the athleticism and hope for the best there. But, you know, another guy who was incredibly athletic and just completely disappeared, never started anywhere, was um, uh, he went to Clemson, he went to Florida, and then he went to UCF and literally never played. And all the athleticism was there. You just wonder why he didn't put it together. Is that and Bowman? Or- yeah, yeah, yeah. Demarcus Bowman. No idea what happened with him. Like, I, you know, it's just very, very weird. Some of these guys who are just so good when they when they hit and and then, you know, for whatever reason, don't actually make it onto a starting roster. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. How about a guy who's going to your school, Cam Williams? You have something not super great to say about him. We have a four second clip here. Push to the ground. Um, yeah, so you're muted, but so Cam Williams pushed to the ground in a one on one here. And that's not great. We don't see that very often. Yeah. Uh, that was like the one thing I kind of was reading about. A lot of the, a lot of times you have to like put the tea leaves, you got to kind of like put the puzzle pieces together. Um, but from what I've read from like some of the tidbits that Tom Lloyd posts on like 24 sevens boards and stuff is that, that Cam Williams is, um, a lot more of a project than is being let on probably um his play strength is not good i, I don't think um you can you can kind of take him out of the equation if you press him a bit uh is he more is he maybe more suitable for the slot um does being in the slot somewhat neutralize his long speed a little bit a little bit maybe i don't know so um he's he's highly ranked i think on all of these services i am pretty skeptical i've been pretty skeptical for a while like i know he has all these awesome athletic attributes but the more the longer we do this the more i just i'm not going to get trapped by these guys i don't give i don't really care with receiver i'm just like i don't care if you're like a 99 like it's definitely good it's good like we want at we want really good athletes and we want really good route runners we want both there's just not that many of them but You know what I mean? Like he's very athletic, but it's just I think there's too many holes in his game. So I I I just feel like he's going to be a year one zero. In which case, I I can, I don't think I'm going to have him ranked super high. I know. I mean, I'm I'm with you on these athletic, especially the big tall athletes that you know uh, we've bet on them for too long, and they rarely develop. Um, they need to already kind of have it. Uh, I think in some cases. I'll go over a couple of names that stood out to me as I reviewed, um, you know, both the videos and some of the reports. A guy for fantasy purposes who's pretty exciting and interesting is Jonathan Paylor going to North Carolina State. He is undersized, like 5'9 ish and 180 pounds, but he's going to be a weapon, uh, running back slash receiver, probably. I saw him in a lot of one on ones as a receiver, but I know he played a lot of running back in high school. Um, <clears throat> really seemed to show kind of that Mario Craver level juice, uh, just really fast, very twitched up uh, to me and uh, looked pretty good running routes. So he could be an interesting weapon in that offense uh, that, you know, could really take off uh, in the second year, I think of that coaching staff, Robert and a, right. So we know that that has produced tons of offense in the past. So I think he's kind of interesting. Um and then we we touched on Ryan Williams, who might go to Auburn um, after this decommitment. And so thinking about the other guys in that class, you know, Cam Cam uh, Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson both kind of fit that mold of like these big guys that you want to believe are going to develop into like Megatron. 
And, you know, they just don't really show it. I'll say between the two of them, Cam Coleman looks like he's a little more refined. I found, I kind of thought he just didn't separate. I mean, he is so big and rangy. He can, he can get up, he can high point balls. He can, you know, kind of overpower high school corners. Does that translate into the SEC and, and in the future to the NFL? I don't think so unless he figures out ways to be more deceptive and get separation. Now, separation is not only about speed. It's also about being a good route runner and deception and things like that. Perry Thompson just looked like a guy out there. I mean, I saw almost nothing that showed me. I mean, he's big and fast and he's athletic and we've got great athleticism numbers on him. But he, it doesn't seem to translate into like running a route. So if Ryan Williams shows up there, I think he's immediately the best receiver in the entire offensive, you know, wide receiver room at Auburn and could be a, a very early standout. I mean, if he winds up at Auburn, I think you're drafting Ryan Williams pretty high just because of production. You know, right away, he, he could even make his way into your college starting lineups at some point next season. <clears throat> um, by the way, just to round out all the Auburn guys, Walker White was the one who threw that beautiful pass to Nate Frazier. Um, you know, he was five of 12 on the day, highlighting a little bit of the, you know, completion percentage issues that we've talked about with him, but it really hard to say in the, in the all-star game. I'm, I'm not going to hold that against him. And that was a beautiful pass down the sideline kind of shows what he can do. Um, I'm going to filibustering here, but another guy that I'll just kind of say I might have been wrong about was Joe Joshisa Trader, who looked really good in one-on-ones. And he's he's had a lot of buzz this season. I know you have um, said he looks pretty good. I know that other people in our in, at C2C really like him. And I'm coming around. Um, you know, my analysis on him was based on old tape. And some of the new stuff looks good. Um, and I thought he looked really nice in the one-on-ones. He's got really good ball tracking, really good hands, and showed some nifty moves, I thought. Um, still, you know, not necessarily a long speed guy, but I don't care that much about that for wide receivers. So I think he's a pretty interesting prospect after all. Um, let's see. Tell us about Bet Bettinker. I know you've been beating the drum on Bettinker. Did he? Did he? I didn't really even see much on him. Did he? Uh, you know, impress you this week? Yeah, I wish I, I would have grabbed some clips of him. But he is. If anyone wants to go, go check out all these one v ones. Just Tom Loy posted a bunch. I think it's the only one I've seen of the All American Bowl practices. But he posted like an eight minute video. Um, but the tight ends in general were kind of, I guess they don't necessarily like stand out typically in these, but um, he had five reps down there. He won four of them. He looked smooth. He looked physical at the top of his, at the top of his routes, at the, at his stems. Um, he looked, he looked solid to me. He didn't, I would have liked to see maybe him like uh, maybe win a vertical one, just to mix one in there. But, you know, the other tight ends, like Luke Reynolds, he kind of looked like a mess a little bit. His movement, he was not fluid to me. Um, his feet, super crooked and just kind of awkward in general. Um, Carter, Carter Nelson was pretty solid. It sounded like throughout the week. Uh, had a nice little play during the game where he broke like three or four tackles. So he's kind of interesting to me. Coming from, uh, you know, Nebraska 8v8 football, is, it's kind of weird. He definitely looks underdeveloped as like he's a guy, he's like one of these four sporters that like clearly hasn't spent too much time in the weight room. And I, I think like he could kind of change quite a bit as a player, uh, maybe more more runway for improvement than some of the other guys because he can take a jump physically, I feel like. Um, so he's kind of interesting, but did Bettenker I I lowered him because I had a 0.75 grade on him. I lowered him a little bit because he came, he, he kind of came in a little small, which I was surprised. Six, three and a half. Not the end of the world, honestly. 236, solid weight for for these guys. He's in the middle of his basketball season right now. So he's, it's cardio studio for this dude. He's gonna he's gonna be 250. Like he, he's gonna get up to mm -hmm. that range. Um you know, within by the time he's a sophomore, I would assume. So 
kind of checks a lot of the boxes, but he's, I don't think he's going to like blow anyone away necessarily. So I lowered his grade a little bit, but I still like him quite a bit. Um, so yeah, anyways, anyone, if anyone wants to go see those one-on-ones, Tom Lowy posted them on YouTube. Awesome. I thought uh, David Mitchell, speaking of tight ends, looked as big as, as big as advertised, big dude, but um you know, kind of looks clunky, which is what I thought I saw on tape. I know that when he reclassified Matt, uh, really liked him a lot. I think he's might be his tight end one or very high up for him. Uh, but I thought he looked a little clunky as expected. Uh, so he didn't show me any additional flexibility or, or something. Now he's a really big dude, 240 plus already. So, you know, what are you going to expect? But he kind of just looked just large. Uh, and not necessarily quick or anything like that. Speaking of verified measurements, you mentioned Benninger came in smaller. Daniel Hill, the aforementioned guy who is committed to Alabama, officially 5'11 and a half, 239. He is massive. Uh, we have him clocked over 20 miles per hour, uh, max miles per hour. So, you know, you got to like that. But in general, he's a guy that I don't see a lot of the – you know, quick twitch stuff you need at the next level. He's just a big guy who can get up to speed, but it takes a while to get there. So I don't think he's the next uh, Derrick Henry, but he's definitely about as big as Derrick Henry. And then um, let's see, you um, you have here uh, something about Ryan Williams. I know we keep going back to the Auburn receivers, but you, you seemed like you saw something pretty interesting on him, just like how he gets around the field. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone can see it. It's really obvious when you watch him that he's just crazy flexible. He's just like, he gets so low on some of his breaks and he just gets in these weird positions. It's just very hard to stay to guard him because he's just very flimsy and, and he's kind of sinewy and kind of can, he's slippery basically. So he's a tough guard for sure. Um, not anything groundbreaking there, but very fluid in general. Um, he's, he, he's very skinny. I mean, he's got to fill out whatever he's 17. Uh, we can say that about a lot of these guys. I'm not going to like harp on that, but, and he's, he's a little weak at the catch point, but, I think he'll improve there. Um, but I don't know if you're trying to protect this. Is this your guy here, Mylon Graham? We've got to talk about him real quick. Yeah, no, I was going to – we had we had some clip at the end. I was going to wrap it up with him. But, yeah, go go uh-huh. ahead into Mylon Graham. I he's bet. a top, yeah, he's so, top tier four, four or five for me, but I do like him. But what did you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. I think we've, we're all high on him. And I'm still high on him. I still like him a lot. It just was a weird week to me. I, I don't really know what to take away – that's the other thing we should kind of talk about. Like how much does this stuff matter? Like, so this is like the big route. This is the big, uh, like the only one I saw him win and he even double caught there. But so like, I don't know what was going on with his, with his catching. And uh, he just seemed, I don't know. He didn't seem super high energy to me. I don't know, but didn't have the greatest week. There wasn't a whole lot of reporting on him in general. It just kind of seemed like a guy. Um, But that does happen because he's coming from really, really bad competition in Indiana. I'm talking like negative 10 SOS or whatever it is. Mm. So to go from that to go to an all-star game with like a bunch of really good players, like it could just be an adjustment thing. Like maybe he was just like a little like overwhelmed or something. Or sometimes people played, you know, good players have bad days, a couple bad days. It happens. So I don't know how much to read into it necessarily. It's just. It's something I'm noting that he did not play. He just didn't play very well. So it's just I'm throwing it out there. People can kind of decide for themselves how much they want to weigh that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great way to wrap it up here. We've talked about a lot of different players. um, But how much does this actually change your opinion of a guy? Um, Or is it more that it chips away or kind of – progressively builds an opinion rather than, you know, a full scale swing. Well, the thing with Graham is that like, I thought like his senior year was worse than his junior tape to to me. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look again. His production was definitely worse. 
So that was another odd thing to me. So I, you never really know, like maybe he could be dealing with an injury or something. Um, I know that he put on some weight, they said from junior to senior year. And so like, maybe that, maybe he's not handling the, the weight very well. Um, so you kind of have to, just, there's a little guesswork involved here. I, I don't know. So he was kind of trending down for me and to see this, this week, it was sort of like, okay, now that's like three things like, between the tape, the production, and now this, like, I, I still like him, but I mean, also like Jeremiah Smith, he's going to be in Jeremiah Smith's shadow at, at Ohio State. So it's just like, is he going to be like a mega producer in college? I don't know. Like, it's Ohio State, so maybe they can sustain, you know, two, two, two producers, but like, I don't know. So I think he's just like, it's just a part of the puzzle and like those three those three things are kind of like moving him down a little bit for me. Sure. I think all that makes sense. Like you said, it's kind of chipping away versus like a wholesale change. But, uh, you know, I think we go into these events, we go into these places where you get kind of up on the microscope and you kind of confirm certain things. I remember when I went and saw um, Avery Johnson at the Elite 11. I already knew about him. I already really liked him. I knew he was super athletic. And my question was, what will he look like in kind of a controlled setting um, where you have to do a five-step drop and hit a timing target type thing? Uh, and, you know, he, he did really well, I thought. But so that was like a piece that I didn't already know about with him. And so you're saying with Mylon Graham, you know, kind of a piece we didn't already know about with him is can you win against some of the best competition because his competition was extra bad. Now, like you said, I don't think you should just write him off completely, uh, but it's, you know, you walk into these events when you know the players and you're like, okay, I want to confirm or deny this one idea that I have that I haven't been able to figure out with all the other information. And so when that gets confirmed or denied, it definitely shapes your opinion. I think that's a pretty reasonable way to approach it. <clears throat> um, and then I think wrapping it up here, we talked a lot about receivers, honestly, because to me, that is the position that I think really shows up in these one-on-ones and in some of these competitions. I mean, honestly, the running backs, the running backs are kind of easy, right? We know if you're big and fast and you're productive, you can do maybe some receiving is, is a way that you can separate some running backs. But for the most part, I don't need to see them at these all-star games and they're not even super physical quarterbacks up close. I think you can tell, but I would actually feel like you got to be there in person, see the whole field and see their timing. I mean, the videos, you can't really tell. So receivers to me are some of the most important guys in this type of setting uh, that we're doing. And that's why we've talked about a lot of receivers, tight ends, but can I end here with a guy we have not hardly talked about at all, but is a major prospect looking to maybe go to Texas A&M, Terry Busey. And I thought he had a pretty good week, at least from what I read. I mean, he looked very hard to cover. He showed up in the actual game as well, um, you know, with it, with a few targets and seemed to be a guy who looked explosive, but we haven't talked about him. Is that big? Is he, was he thought to be a DB for a while, but it looks like he's going to play receiver. Yeah, a lot of schools were recruiting him as a defensive back. Um, but it seems like he wants to play wide receiver. A lot of these young kids always want to seem to be the star on offense, right? So it sounds like he's uh, leaning towards that. And I don't know. He, uh, I actually have a note on him. Adam Gordy had talked about him. Let's see if I can find it real quick. But basically, he ran a lot of like short stuff for sure. Like he's very twitch, twitched up mm -hmm. and he's, he's one of the, I think he's a 95th percentile athlete in our database. Uh, mm -hmm. We got some pretty big numbers on him. So he can get like he as well. So like, we don't even have full receiver tape on him, I guess either. Yeah. So that's the hard part. It's like, I'm like a little bit hesitant, like with like QBs converting to wide, wide receiver is such a, position where it's very mental and very takes a lot of reps and, and takes a lot of practice to get good at it and so it, it 
it makes me a little nervous, but I don't know. Apparently, he did good in this setting, at least. So that's a positive thing for him. Adam Gordney, what did he say? He was able to consistently get open and catch the ball away from his body, which is good. And that was from Charles Power. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so basically, it was something about his movement he had mentioned. I'll be able to find it here. Just help me out and just yeah. say some stuff about him. I, I can I can always talk, that's for sure. So, yeah, I mean, I just think he was an interesting guy because – he hasn't, you know, we, we go so deep. We talk about so many players during the year and um, you know, he kept coming up on some articles that he impressed this week. And I think it's because we just don't know what to do with players like this. And we see this sometimes um, with, you know, option quarterbacks that are going to transition. And sometimes they do absolutely nothing in college. They can't make the transition. And then occasionally they look really good. Um it just kind of depends on that football IQ, which I think is difficult to really evaluate from our perspective here. But I would say that, suffice to say, a guy like Busey is an incredible athlete. We know that um, if you hear buzz when he gets on campus that, you know, he's already running circles around people or getting, you know, looks with the first team, he'd be a guy that I'd flip my opinion on really quickly. Cause we just don't know. We don't know how he's going to do with the transition, but if he shows up and he's already looking like a savvy receiver could be a guy to really uh, keep an eye on, now, especially now that Evan Williams is gone from that offense. I mean, they're going to need to throw it to somebody and, and that receiver room was thin without Evan Williams to me. Yeah. I found it real quick. You just said top-ranked athlete in the 2024 class. Bussy exclusively played wide receiver at the Under Armour game and looked great at the position. The Texas A&M commit who plans to visit College Station and Georgia this month and is working on Alabama and LSU trips as well. Also excelled at quarterback and defensive back where most programs other than Alabama are recruiting him. So – I guess hmm. Alabama was the was the main team that was looking at him as receiver. Um, hmm. so, but it's clear that Bussy can make an impact anywhere on the field. For the first time seeing him, Bussy didn't seem to be as fluid an athlete as I expected, but he still got open against everybody and was clearly a play, playmaker against elite competition all week. So there's hmm. definitely a risk involved with him. Uh, don't know what position he's going to end up as. Apparently he's not super fluid, just kind of a twitchy – Twitchy type guy, kind of. That's interesting. Uh, Herky jerky type type guy. Hmm. Man, you know that is really interesting, and the fact that he went and played receiver exclusively at this All Star situation means, I mean, to me, that says he wants to play receiver. Um, you know, I guess he can get to a campus, and the coach is like, "Look, you have to play something else," and then maybe he transfers or whatever. But it sounds like he wants to play receiver. If that's the case. Uh, and so we need to at least be aware um, because he will be fantasy relevant potentially at that position. So anybody else you want to highlight here uh, that we did not get into? Um, I'll just say quickly that Terrell Anderson is watching some of his one-on-ones. He looks faster than he did on tape at times. So it's, he's like somebody I'm just going to revisit. Like he looked pretty – He's a, like he's a long strider for sure. He's got real long legs, but he looks pretty smooth, especially vertically. Uh, going to North Carolina State, so he's he's somebody I'm going to revisit. A um, couple other notes: Killen Billiard, who's like a converted basketball player, hasn't played a ton of football. He actually looked pretty decent on some comeback routes, which I was surprised. So he actually looked like a pretty good mover. Um, and he he didn't look as raw as I as I would have expected for someone who I don't think has played a whole lot of football. So hmm. I'm gonna I gotta make sure I check out his senior tape. And then um, Jason and Brown did, said, he, just another note on Billio because he's a guy I haven't looked at too extensively, but you know he did leave his lead his team in receiving this year um, and had about half their touchdown more, more than half their receiving touchdown. So kind of a dominant guy, especially if he's new to playing the position, it's kind of interesting. And we know LSU knows what the hell they're doing with the wide receivers. Yeah, they definitely do. I guess the one, the one thing is like LSU, they get like, you have to be really good to be like a producer at LSU. Mm -hmm. Like, cause they, 
especially next year, they're getting into Corey Moore, who I know he's a stud. I know he's good. Like, he's going to be the guy, I feel like, at LSU. So it's just like, okay, you know, it's a blue blood program. It's LSU. So it's, uh, is he going to be like a huge producer um, in college side? Maybe not, but can they get him to the NFL? Absolutely. Uh, LSU can. We already know that. Um, and then lastly, Jason Brown just had two two really like kind of awkward reps. Um, he came from uh, Jason Brown. He's a uh, running back going to um, Arizona State. He's been listed at 5'10", 205 this entire process. He's been, he is now officially verified at 5'7 194. So he's a small dude, oh. uh, kind of a meatball, ball muscle type guy. Um, but he's coming from an offense that they don't, they don't use the running backs in the passing game like whatsoever. And he just had a couple of reps that Tom Lopo said he just, he, he looked really, really raw in that regard. So a small running back that might not be, might, might, might not give you a whole lot in the passing game. So. Uh, just going to throw that out there as well. Uh, and I know he's a guy that you kind of did like, I think, early in the process, if it's the same guy I'm thinking about. But, yeah, yeah I kind of like him. He's on 24-7. They've updated. 5'7 and a half, 194. So a lot smaller than I thought. I thought he was a bigger guy, too. I agree. Yeah, he's still 86 percentile athlete. So he's like a small – like he deadlifts like 600 pounds. That's – Pretty crazy for a guy his size. Like, so he is like a muscled up dude. Um, Arizona State, I don't know. Is it the most exciting place for a running back? Could be okay. Like, they don't have a very good depth chart. So, yeah, it's like a weak depth chart. Like, I kind of like his running style a little bit, but as far as like being much of a receiver, I don't, I don't know. Might not have for him. Yeah. Well, I think that does it. Somehow we always take up all the time and sometimes go over, even when it's a small subject matter like these all-star games. But I think this is all really valuable info. Hopefully our uh, watchers like it. I got to throw this in there here at the end. Uh, our partner, um, Home Field Apparel, go check them out if you're still listening. Uh, you've probably been there before, but really great stuff for every college you can possibly imagine. Uh, really uh, cool uh, shirts, sweatshirts hoodies, hats, pants, sweatpants, all those kinds of things. And if you type in campus number two Canton uh, in the promo code, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. And also go check out campus to Canton.com for all our additional tools and things that you need to be a better fantasy football player on the college side, as well as the NFL side. Um, again, if you're got to the end of this, you should definitely like, and subscribe because we're going to keep giving you this every single week uh, on the recruiting. Uh, we just had a, a guy tweet at the campus to Canton handle. Do you know any freshman podcasts? And we were like, uh, yeah, the official every single week. No one goes as in depth as we do, especially on a fantasy angle. So, you know, keep, keep following with us. And uh, thank you for joining us on this edition where we talked about the all-star results. We'll see you next week. And we will talk three-star running backs. So there's hidden gems like Damian Martinez, Ashton Janty, Last few years, we've hit on some real uh, producers, early producers on our three-star show. So, David, thanks for your time again tonight, and we'll see you guys next week with three-star running backs. This has been The Official.